In this video, I want to talk about how least squares estimators can actually be regarded as a time of maximum likelihood estimator in the circumstance where we have normally distributed errors in the population. So the idea here is that we have some population, as we normally do, and within that population, there is some sort of population process. So there is some sort of process which determines yi, and I'm going to assume, for the sake of argument, that it's determined by a single explanatory variable xi times some sort of constant beta plus some error term epsilon i. And note that I've left out the sort of intercept term, which we often see in linear regression, but it doesn't change anything in terms of the analysis I'm about to do. It just makes the maths a little bit easier to work with. And I'm going to assume that this error term, epsilon i, is normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. So the idea with linear regression and the idea with econometrics in general is that we don't have the entirety of the population. We only have a sample from that population. And what we would like to do is we'd like to use some sort of tool on that sample in order to estimate the parameter beta. So we've already talked about how we can do this using least squares estimators, but now I want to repeat the process using the maximum likelihood interpretation. So first of all, how do we go ahead and build a likelihood uh, function for one particular sample value within our sample? Well, it's quite easy. Seeing as we know that EI or epsilon i is normally distributed, and we can write that epsilon i is equal to yi minus beta times xi, then it must be the case that yi minus beta xi is itself normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared, because it's just equal to epsilon i. And because of that, that makes it very easy to write down the likelihood function. The likelihood function for one particular observation we can write as the function of xi, given that we know the parameters beta and sigma squared, is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi times sigma squared, times the exponent of minus, on the top here, we would have ei, but we're going to replace it with yi minus beta xi, all squared, divided through by 2 sigma squared. So that's the likelihood function for one particular observation. But in general, we have a sample of n observations. So what we're actually going to define is we're going to define the conditional probability distribution for all of those n points in our sample. And to get that, if we assume that our points in our sample are independent of one another, then we can form that just by taking the product of all of these different likelihood functions. So it's the product of 1 over 2 pi root sigma squared um, times the exponent of minus yi minus beta xi, all squared, divided through by 2 sigma squared. And we could simplify this a little bit further if we take this term here outside of the product and recognize that we then are going to be multiplying this thing n times. So we're going to have 1 over root 2 pi sigma squared to the power n, and then we're going to have our product term, which is the product of i equals 1 to n of e to the minus yi minus beta xi, all squared, divided through by 2 sigma squared. Okay, so that's the overall likelihood function. But the problem with this likelihood function, like is often the case with the likelihood functions, is that because it's a product, it's inherently difficult to differentiate. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to take the log of this, and we've spoken about the reasons why this is an okay thing to do. And I've actually realised that this shouldn't be a squared here, this should be to the power n. Um, but we can take the log of this whole thing, and then we get that the log likelihood is just going to be given by, we're just going to get n times the log of this first term here, which is n log 1 over root 2 pi sigma squared. And then for the second term, when you take the log of a product, it becomes a sum. So we're going to get the sum from i equals 1 to n of when you take the natural log of e, e just disappears, and we're just left with yi minus beta xi all squared. And we could write the 2 sigma squared underneath this all, but because it doesn't have an index of summation, we can take it outside of the summation. And note that we've got the minus sign here because we've got a minus sign up. OK, so that's the log likelihood, and it's quite a simple function. So we can go ahead and differentiate it with respect 
to the parameter of interest or the parameter we're trying to estimate after all. So if we differentiate the log likelihood with respect to the parameter beta, then what we get is we're, this whole sort of first term here is going to disappear. The next term, when we differentiate this term in parenthesis here, or in the parenthesis here rather, we're going to get the 2 coming down in front of the parenthesis, and because it doesn't have an index of summation, we can take that outside, so we're just going to get a minus 2 over 2 sigma squared, but then we get a minus from differentiating the term inside the parenthesis here, using the chain rule, so then we're going to get a minus coming out, so that's going to make the whole thing plus. And finally, what we get out with differentiating the thing inside the parenthesis with respect to beta is that we're going to get an xi. So we're going to get the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi minus beta hat times xi is defined to be equal 0. So we can kind of forget about this term outside of the summation here because we could always multiply or divide through by it because it's not 0. OK, so this is our first order condition. And it looks kind of similar to what we had before, right? I mean, before, when we were doing linear regression, our first order condition was that the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times the estimated error, in other words, the residual, has to be equal to 0. And that's exactly what we've got here, right? This term in the parenthesis here is really just the estimated residual because it's the estimated error because of the fact that we are using beta hat rather than beta. And if we work through this, it's very easy to show that beta hat, maximum likelihood in this circumstance, is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi divided through by the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared. And actually, this is identical to the least squares estimator in the circumstance where we're considering not having a intercept. So what does this show? Well, it shows that in the circumstances where we have normally distributed errors, maximum likelihood estimators of linear regression coefficients are actually identical to the least squares estimators. So in that sense, you can kind of regard least squares estimators as a type of maximum likelihood estimator in some senses, or I suppose in some senses vice versa as well.